What if I told you, you could import a pivot animation directly to Adobe Animate, with a transparent background and no pixelated scale and artifacts, seamlessly, without any third-party software? You're gonna need to work with not a .gif or .avi, but with a Nemesis sequence, and not a .png or .jpeg, but a .svg, which almost nobody has talked about since Pivot Animator's birth in 2005. Now, of course, that power does come with a price, which I will mention later on, but this makes Pivot Animations even more dojo -colab friendly. However, more work is needed from the Pivot Animator if the Dojo Collab host doesn't have the time for this process, which I will demonstrate soon enough. Now, I invite you all to try this out and experiment with new workflows that will open up a myriad of possibilities for Doc Demon and Dojo Collabs alike, and share them with each other. We're interested in what you come up with. Let me show you how this is done. Let me open up an example animation, and now the next thing you wanna do is hit file, export animation, and where it says save as type, don't go for .gif or .avi, but separate images. Click on that, and then you type in the name, whatever you like. So let's go with test vector 2. Here we go. Now, you wanna hit save. So it used to be PNG. And most people tend to work with .gif. Now you don't want to go with any of these. Go for .svg. And already, you're gonna see quality and super sample grayed out. And this is normal because now you're not dealing with pixels anymore. You're dealing with the vector graphics. Infinite scaling and no loss of quality. You hit OK. You want to end up with something like this. A graphic that contains all of the animation and you can move it however you like. Okay, so. Once you're done exporting, before you begin importing, go to new layer, hit file, import, and then import the stage. Find where you saved your folder, double click it, and it's enough to, to click on one image. You don't have to select every single image in the folder. So then you hit, uh, you click open, and for this pop-up, hit yes. Now here's where it's redundant. So you go to the first option, and it's OK. But then, this appears again. But if you notice, the file name changes from 0 to 1. Which means, for every new frame, you're gonna have to, to click on the same thing. So, I have 55 images, so I'm gonna have to click on this 55 times. And of course, if you're dealing with an animation with over 200 frames or 500 or what have you, be prepared for some stretching and taking breaks because otherwise you're gonna suffer from some really major carpal syndrome. So this is the result of what's imported. Now let's study this. As you can see, every pivot figure is its own object. But then, if you isolate one of them, instead of it being a rig, you're gonna notice that every line is separated. Meaning, editing this isn't as easy, so the animation ha already has to be good and pivot before you decide to finally import it. So this is more of a finalizing stage. Now to make this more collab friendly, follow the follow the following steps. Add a new layer and make sure it's below this. Add a rectangle. Nothing appears because this is set to zero alpha. So once you have this, make it a symbol. Doesn't matter if it's a graphic or movie clip. And name it whatever you usually name your collab entries. I'm gonna make this a graphic, just so you can see what's happening in in here, in workspace. So, hit OK. Now I have this. Now before we access the... Before we access the symbol, make sure you have all of these frames selected. Copy the frames. Now, it's okay to hide this for now. And double click. Add the new layer. And paste those frames. Now, you can keep this or delete it. It's up to you. But for me, I'm gonna keep it. So, you go back. 
And there you have it. A fully integratable pivot animation in Adobe Animate without any transparency problems or scaling issues. So notice, this is the, uh, this is the vector and this is the pixel image. So if you, if you imported it as an image sequence with the, with the .png extension, you're gonna get this result. And this doesn't come with just the scale and artifacts, but also the file size. Because now, as opposed to vectors, the file size of uh, .png can get quite big. So if you work with .svg, you have about a few tens of kilobytes per image, so it's not that big a deal. So I posted this primal stone age fire like a discovery with the Dark Demon Discord, which you should join by the way. And a few questions arose, I'll share with you the answers I gave back. The first question is, can it work with Micromedia Flash 8? And unfortunately, no. And here's why. So I, I go back to the same folder, which already has the images, and as you can see, Flash 8 doesn't seem to detect SVG files, as opposed to regular PNG raster images, which are okay. Ultimately, you're gonna have to use the latest version of Adobe Animate if possible. The other question is, can this work with stick nodes? And unfortunately, no. Um, Pivot can... While Pivot can export uh, .svg image sequences, stick nodes can't. Most of what it could do is, I think, export the .png sequence or JPEG. Now, stick nodes users can confirm this. But from my experience, that is what I found. And then the final question is, does Adobe Animate translate them into a puppet rig as well, or simply convert the images into shapes? And the answer is the latter. While Pivot does read the object as a rig, Adobe Animate doesn't. And as I demonstrated earlier, all lines are separated. Anyway, I hope you found this useful, and as always, Follow us on social media, on Twitter, and this YouTube, as well as our Discord. And, of course, thank you for watching.